I, I'd like to start uh, just by saying a um, uh, metaphor that has really been important to me in life, and uh, because I think it applies to you people who have put this together, and I think Scotty said it best. You know, I mean, this is a great place to grow up. Hello. Okay, Peggy. <laughs> um, and that's a great place to grow up and a great place to be. And, and I was really fortunate to be able to come here after I graduated from college. And uh, the metaphor is this, that uh, every man, woman, and child that ever lived is in the Jordan River. At the top of the Jordan River is the Sea of Life, Sea of Galilee, called the Sea of Life because it had uh, different species of fish that everybody lived on. And then turns into the Jordan River and comes down to the Dead Sea, which is one of the lowest places of the earth. Uh, and nothing lived there. It was mostly salt. And so uh, everybody is somewhere in the Jordan River moving up, trying to swim up into the Sea of Life. The problem is a lot of people get to the Sea of Life, and there are two kinds of people. One, I'm up, pull the ladder up. And another, they jump back into the river and start pulling other people up. And that's what you do. And you've been doing it since I came to Delane and saw it. I see the history long before that. But some kids, even at Delano High School, started with one foot in the Dead Sea. And the first one I want to introduce uh, is Path, sleeping now. His name is Julio Morales. Uh, Julio Morales, uh, when he came to Delano High School, was just one tough kid. And uh, made the team, um, ran up a 17-0 uh, and zero record real quick. And uh, I took him home from school uh, after wrestling practice one day because one of the wrestlers told me, you know, go see where he lives. So I went. We drove up in front of his house, and the front window was blasted out. I said, Julio, what, what happened to that window? He said, oh, man, they, they, they come last night with a shotgun, they blew it out. I said, they blew out your front window with a shotgun? He said, yeah, man. And I said, uh, hey, did you call the police? He said, no, I didn't call the police. I got them. <laughs> Really, what do you mean you got him? He says, I blew up his car. <laughs> <clears throat> so now, you have to remember, this is back in 1970. If your hair is too long, you don't get to play sports. If you have cigarettes just carrying them, you don't play sports, you're out. And I'm pretty sure blowing up cars <laughs> was not something that was going to go over well. And, uh, so I went to see Ray Frederick, and uh, he was like a dad to me. I mean, he um, he's just one of the greatest men I've ever met. And uh, I told him what the problem was because I had got a a kid, talked him into going out for wrestling when in my first year there, and Ray told me that kid will hurt you. Uh, that kid hurt me. Yeah, he did. And so I never forgot that. So two years later, here's Shirley Morales. So I went to see Ray. And I said, Ray, you know, and I explained all this to him. And you know, Ray always looked, you know, right at you. And he says, I think we can help him. And so he stayed. The next week, we're at the Fresno tournament. Julio gets into the finals against this Valley champion from Fresno. And it was a wild, wild match. And it ended up being 17 to 16. Julio lost. And he doesn't want to stop the match. He just keeps going. And the other kid's trying to get away from him. The referee's trying to break it up. And I come out and pulled Julio away. And he, he just wanted to keep going. And he said, they're shooting me. They're shooting me. <laughs> I said, Julio, Julio. And the referee said, you're out of the tournament. So I let Julio go, and I went over, and I said, listen, listen, you don't know where this kid is from. You don't know. He said, Terry, do you hear what that man called me? <laughs> I know, but you don't know where he's from. And so he let him stay. 
and turn it. They didn't get them out. But that's the way he came into Delano High School. But because of Ray Frederick and a lot of teachers here, they pulled him up that river in the Sea of Life. And he won about everything there was to win. But in his senior year, he was wrestling in the Valley Finals, and uh, he gets beat on a real controversial call. Never said a word. He came off the mat. I said, who are you going to throw a great match? He says, yeah, it could have gone either way. It could have gone either way. No anger. And so I thought, you know, here's, can you believe the difference in this kid in four years? He won the Bakersfield College Tournament. He won just about everything there was to win. And he was, he wrestled and he placed in the state tournament. And uh, he really put a lot of things on the map for Delano High School. His team, from the time he came here and the time he left, four years, they were undefeated. And these kids, I, I mean, no coach can take credit for what these kids were like. I mean, they were camaraderie. Julio, after the senior year, I had uh, quit uh, coaching, and he went to work for me uh, in the field. He was uh, working in concrete. He actually built, was part of the crew that built the Mesa Marin private prison, which he would later occupy. And he called me from that prison. He said, Coach, I'm in Mesa Marin. I said, Co I said, Willie, what are you doing? He says, oh, you know, he said, I'm almost out. In a couple of months, I'll be out. He says, but I told him I could get out of here anytime I want. I know how to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and he did. He knew where there was a pipe that went into a canal. And I said, don't do that. Just stay. He said, no, 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 I wouldn't go. But at any rate, uh, after he graduated, you know, we have a lot of influence. I, I think we have a lot of influence, uh, the people to get to to be around you kids growing up. We do have a lot of influence, and my influence wasn't good. And, uh, you know, Ray Frederick once told me, he said, Terry, now this is after he retired. He says, Terry, you know, if you become a Christian, you could be another Paul. Well, I didn't know who Paul was, and I was pretty sure I didn't want to be like him. But I couldn't tell Ray that because I just loved him so much. And so when Ray died, I almost died. I just, a part of me was just gone. But Gene Back and I became very close. Pat Schaefer is my best friend. And so we started spending a lot of time together. Gene Beck was a lot like um, Ray Frederick, a very principled guy. And I know a lot of you that played for him know that. It's just nobody liked Gene Beck. And uh, so. Then Gene died. But before Gene died, I did become a Christian. I became a Seventh-day Adventist. And so Gene and I spoke a lot about sports and about religion. And uh, I was working in um, Africa, uh, actually working on a, a university there, building a university. And, and I came home. Uh, and when I was home, I got a call from Julio Morales' niece, Luby, and she says, uh, Coach Moreland, uh, uh, Julio's sick. I said, what, what do you mean sick? He says, uh, they said he's dying. I said, well, what do you mean dying? She says, uh, they say it's his liver and that he's going to die. I said, well, can he get a liver transplant? They said, no, he was at Sierra Vista or whatever the clinic can. I said, let me call you right back. So I called a physician who was a member of our church who had a radiology clinic, and I told him what the deal was. He says, get him down here right now. So I called her back, and she and her mother brought, uh, brought Julio to this office. And uh, so uh, he took him back, and uh, he came out. He says, Terry, uh, when I get the reading, I'll call you. He says, he's in a lot of pain. I gave him some stuff for the pain. So I'll call you just as soon as I get this. So. Julio and his uh, sister and niece went home. 
And uh, when I got home, uh, the radiologist called me, and he said, Terry, this man should not be alive. He is, no, there's nothing I can do except try to keep him comfortable. I said, are you sure? He said, I, I'm positive. He said, I don't know how he's still alive. So the next day I grabbed my son and I went to see him. And went to his house, a lot of people there, and they let me in. And so when I got into the room with Julio, he's laying in bed, and he's looking at me, and of course everybody's talking, they're trying to introduce me to people, and I'm introducing my son, but I'm looking at Julio, and uh, all these people want to talk about was wrestling, really, because he was, he was the hero of their fam that family. And uh, so I said, Julio, you know, I've got to go, you've got a lot of people here, can I pray with you? He said, yes, coach. So I prayed with him, and you know, when I pray, I just talk. I don't get into that, I hate that. Uh, anyway, I left. On my way home, I told my son, Julio wanted to talk to me. And my son said, yeah, he did. I said, oh my goodness, so I get back, take off for LA, take off in Nigeria, and the next day I got a dinner, uh, and I'm with one of the officials from Nigeria, and I got my phone out, and I look at my phone, you're not supposed to answer the phone when you were with an official from Nigeria, it's not good protocol. And so I'm looking, and it's my office. My office never calls me, because you can't hold a call on a cell phone. Anytime they call, they will just text me and then I call back on a landline. So I knew it had to be something important. So I picked it up, started not to pick it up, but I did, I went outside and my office said, uh, uh, Mr. Moreland, uh, Lupe Morales is on the phone and she said, Julio wants to talk to you. I said, put him on. I didn't think the call was gonna last. And Julio got on the phone. He says, Coach, I said, I'm dying. And I said, yeah, Julio, I know. He says, they came to give me my last rites and I told them to get the hell out of here. <laughs> and I said, Julio. And he said, Coach, and his voice was quivering. And he, he is such a tough guy, all of those that know him. And he said, Coach, what's gonna happen to me? 